Welcome back, fellow enthusiasts. If you've been searching for a simple, low-maintenance way to boost your cannabis yields without adding more work, spending a fortune, or dealing with complex equipment, you're in the right place. Today, we're taking a deep dive into passive CO2 enrichment and how it affects cannabis plants. By the end of this episode, you'll know exactly what passive CO2 is, how it works, the different application methods, and how to tell if it's actually making a difference in your grow. Before we jump in, I want to give a big thank you to the Exhale Homegrown CO2 Company for sponsoring this episode. Exhale has been a trusted name in natural CO2 solutions for over 20 years. Their ready-to-use bags feature a patented strain of CO2-producing fungi that delivers a steady release for up to six months. No tanks, no timers, and no electricity. Just clean, consistent CO2 powered by biology. Be sure to check the video description below for exclusive promo codes and more information about their company. Also make sure to stick around, because later in this video, we'll be sharing how you can enter for a chance to win a free Exhale CO2 bag. And of course, as always, please remember this is an educational video, and all information provided is for educational purposes only. Now, let's dive in. Chapter 1. CO2 and Cannabis Plants So why should we care about carbon dioxide in the first place? Cannabis, like all green plants, absorbs CO2 through tiny pores on its leaves called stomata. Inside the leaf, CO2 is converted into sugars through photosynthesis, and it is those sugars that power everything. From cell growth and bud development to resin production and root expansion, sugars are the foundation of the plant's entire operation. The more access your plants have to CO2, the more building blocks they have to grow faster, stronger, and more efficiently. But here's the catch. Most indoor grow environments hover around 400 parts per million of CO2, which is roughly the same as outdoor air. That's fine for survival, but if you're cultivating in a controlled space, supplementing CO2 can unlock exponential growth. To help us further understand how CO2 affects cannabis plants, let's take a look at the science. Multiple studies have shown that cannabis thrives at CO2 levels between 800 and 1200 parts per million, with some high-performance grows pushing up to 1500 ppm under strict environmental control. For example, a study published in Hort Science found that cannabis exposed to 1,000 ppm produced significantly more dry biomass compared to plants grown at ambient levels. Similarly, a 2012 peer-reviewed study titled Physiological Responses of Higher Plants to Elevated Carbon Dioxide highlighted that C3 plants, which includes the cannabis plant, show increased photosynthetic activity, greater biomass accumulation, and improved water use efficiency when grown in CO2-enriched environments. Chapter 2. What is passive CO2 and who is it for? Passive CO2 simply means non-mechanical. No electronics, no timers, no pressurized tanks. Instead, passive systems use natural biological processes like fermentation, decomposition, or fungal respiration to release carbon dioxide slowly and steadily into a grow space. Passive CO2 is ideal for home growers, tent setups, and hobbyists who want to improve growth without adding complexity or cost. It's also perfect for small sealed environments where tanks would be overkill, low power grows, or for anyone who just wants to try something different. Chapter 3. Different Passive CO2 Methods Now that we've covered what passive CO2 is and who it's best for, let's talk about the different methods growers use to implement it. First off, let's discuss fermentation bottles. This is one of the most common and accessible DIY methods for passive CO2 enrichment, and it's been used by home growers for years because it's cheap, simple, and doesn't require any specialized equipment. The basic setup involves combining sugar, water, and active yeast in a plastic bottle or glass jug. The yeast consumes the sugar in an anaerobic environment, and during that fermentation process, CO2 is released as a natural byproduct. To control the release, the bottle is typically sealed with either a one-way airlock or a hose that vents the CO2 directly toward the plant canopy. As the gas builds up, 
It gradually escapes through the hose or airlock and drifts over the plants. Since CO2 is heavier than air, directing the hose above or near the canopy helps ensure it settles where the plants can actually use it. This method is inexpensive and great for experimenting, especially in small grow tents or micro setups. However, there are a few important limitations to keep in mind. First, the output is difficult to regulate. If the mixture gets too hot or too cold, or if the sugar runs out, production can slow down or stop entirely without warning. Second, it requires frequent maintenance. You'll likely need to refill or remake the mixture every few days to keep the system producing consistently. Over time, the liquid can start to smell sour, and if not cleaned properly, the bottles can attract gnats or mold. Lastly, while fermentation bottles do produce CO2, the levels are usually modest and can fluctuate quite a bit, which makes them less ideal for larger grows or growers seeking reliable, consistent enrichment. Next, we have Bokashi bins. Bokashi bins are airtight containers that use a fermentation-based process to break down food waste with the help of beneficial microorganisms. These microbes are introduced via Bokashi bran, which is typically wheat or rice bran inoculated with a combination of effective microbes. Once added to the bin, this microbe-rich material goes to work fermenting the food scraps by creating an acidic environment that prevents rotting and pathogen growth. Unlike traditional aerobic composting, Bokashi composting is anaerobic. This means it works in the absence of oxygen and leads to fermentation rather than decay. The fermentation process preserves more of the original nutrients and prepares the material for rapid breakdown once it's added to soil. This method works particularly well in hybrid or permaculture-style grow setups, where growers integrate composting and microbial diversity directly into their cultivation process. However, there are a few important caveats. Because Bokashi fermentation produces a strong sour smell, it's not ideal for tightly controlled indoor spaces. Managing moisture levels and preventing cross-contamination also requires some attention. The final thing to consider is that since the CO2 released is a byproduct, not the primary goal, the levels tend to be modest and inconsistent, making it less suitable as a standalone enrichment method. Now let's talk about CO2 mushroom bags. CO2 mushroom bags are one of the cleanest, most reliable and widely used methods of passive CO2 enrichment. They're especially popular among indoor cannabis growers who want simplicity without sacrificing performance. These bags contain a carefully selected fungal culture, often a strain of mycelium, along with a nutrient-rich organic substrate. As the fungi consume the substrate, they go through a natural metabolic process called respiration, which steadily releases CO2 as a byproduct. This process is much like how we humans exhale carbon dioxide when we breathe. What makes these bags so effective is their consistency. Unlike fermentation bottles that can fizzle out or fluctuate, mushroom bags maintain a stable CO2 output for several weeks or even months. They're also completely maintenance-free. No mixing, no refilling, no timers or regulators. You simply hang the bag slightly above your plant canopy, and since CO2 is heavier than air, gravity will help guide the enriched air downward over your plants. This set-it-and-forget-it option is perfect for growers who want to maximize plant performance without increasing their workload. It's quiet, clean, and doesn't produce odors or heat, which makes it ideal for smaller setups or sealed grow rooms where consistency is key. Some growers use multiple bags in larger rooms, placing them strategically throughout the space to ensure the CO2 released is distributed evenly. While they may not reach the ultra-high PPM levels of a pressurized system, the slow and steady release often creates better long-term results, especially when paired with strong lighting and good environmental controls. Chapter 4. Why Passive CO2 Works So Well Passive CO2 systems provide a consistent, low-level release that mimics natural environments. Unlike mechanical systems that blast CO2 in bursts, which can cause dramatic spikes and drops, passive systems deliver a steady stream. And fun fact, cannabis plants, like almost every other living thing, love consistency. When CO2 levels remain stable in the 800 to 1200 parts per million range, plants maintain peak metabolic function. That leads to better nutrient uptake, 
increased resin production, and faster cell division. Another big benefit? No heat. Many mechanical systems, especially propane or natural gas burners, raise temperatures and humidity which potentially can trigger mold, pests, or other stressors to the plant. And perhaps most underrated is the simplicity. No timers, no calibrations, no gas leaks to worry about. It just works, quietly and efficiently. Now that we've covered some background on today's topic, let's take a closer look at one of the most practical and reliable ways to introduce natural carbon dioxide into your grow. The Exhale Homegrown CO2 Bag. For over 20 years, Exhale has taken the science of fungal respiration and turned it into a clean, controlled, and highly effective solution for indoor gardening. Each bag is thoughtfully designed to meet the needs of real-world growers, from small home tents to fully sealed commercial rooms. It's a true plug-and-play system. Just hang the bag above your canopy and the fun guy inside get to work, producing a steady stream of CO2. This is possible because inside each bag is a proprietary substrate that serves as the fungi's food source, along with a patented, non-fruiting mycelium strain developed specifically for steady, reliable respiration. What really sets Exhale apart is that they were the first to bring the CO2 bag concept to market. While plenty of imitators have followed, none match Exhale's consistency or quality. That's why every product carries the original CO2 bag seal, so when you see that label, you know you're getting proven performance. And here's something special for our community. Exhale is giving one lucky viewer a chance to win a free Exhale CO2 bag. This model delivers a steady 1300 ppm of CO2 for up to six months and is rated for grow spaces up to four by four feet or 120 cubic feet. For full giveaway details, go to the video summary or visit our website. While you're there, check out our promo codes from Exhale. It's a great way to save if you're ready to give it a try. Now let's get back to today's topic. Chapter 5. How to Optimize CO2 To get the most out of passive CO2, a few conditions need to be right. First, let's talk about lighting. Your plants need sufficient light intensity to actually make use of the additional CO2. If your lights are too dim or positioned too far from the canopy, your plants won't be able to ramp up photosynthesis. Ideally, you'll want full-spectrum LED or HID lighting that delivers strong photosynthetically active radiation levels across the canopy. The more light your plants receive, the more effectively they can process and benefit from elevated CO2 levels. Next is temperature. Warmer conditions, typically between 80 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit during the light cycle, will help the plants metabolize CO2 more efficiently. When temperatures are too low, metabolic activity slows down, which limits the benefits of added carbon dioxide. Air circulation is just as important. Since CO2 is heavier than air, it tends to settle near the floor. Without proper movement, the gas may not reach your canopy where it's needed most. Using a small oscillating fan to gently circulate air can help lift and distribute CO2 more evenly across your grow space. It's also a good idea to avoid placing your CO2 source too close to exhaust fans, as this can remove the gas from the room before your plants have a chance to absorb it. Whether you're new to CO2 enrichment or just looking for a simpler way to improve your grow, passive CO2 offers a natural, affordable, and low-maintenance solution. It's quiet, consistent, and easy to implement. And when used correctly, it can take your plants to the next level. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and tap that notification bell so you don't miss what's coming next. And if you'd like to take it a step further, consider becoming a Cannabis Guy channel member. Your support helps me continue bringing you in-depth content covering everything about cannabis, from grow science to strain history and beyond. Members get exclusive perks like member-only giveaways, exclusive discounts, recognition in a video, access to videos you can't find anywhere else, and much, much more. It's a great way to support the work I do while getting even more out of the community we're building together. Thanks again for watching, and remember to stay curious, my friends.